Hello everyone, my name is L, and today I will tell you about an anime schoolboy who, after the explosion of the bus, strange seeds get into his head and he turned himself into Hiruko. Before starting the video, do not forget to turn on the bell. Enjoy watching. Akiyuki Takahara is in a hurry as he rushes to school. However, he firstly makes a stop at his father's workshop to drop his lunch. Earlier on, his mother caught up with him while trying to run to school, and had forced him to take the lunchbox to his father. Akiyuki doesn't waste much time there, as he leaves almost immediately, and journeys to school with the aim of getting there on time. Meanwhile, at the school bus stop, Haru Nishimura and Furuchi Teroroka are patiently awaiting the arrival of Akiyuki. Just in time, he catches up with the bus, just as it's about to take off. An unknown girl is seen at the checkpoint waiting for the bus. Unfortunately, she is unable to enter as she does not have the school handband, which is required to enter the bus. Out of sympathy, Akiyuki deliberately drops his handband on the floor, so she can pick it up and get on the bus. He creates an excuse from his side as he is also allowed on board. On the other hand, there are more threatening airships on Sentan Island. The serenity is affected as there is an unexpected breakout of chaos. Meanwhile, there is a sudden explosion in the bus caused by the girl Akiyuki had helped earlier. A substance from the explosion enters Akiyuki, who is confused as to what is going on. He goes into the destroyed bus to find out if everything is okay with the girl. Getting to her, she tells him she is sorry and blacks out after she touches him. He in turn transforms into a giant figure that seems strange. The figure is called Zammed. Due to the explosion, soldiers arrive at the scene and seeing the giant figure Akiyuki had become, they shoot at him continuously. A destructive attack takes place as the island experiences great chaos. After being shot at, Akiyuki wakes up and surprisingly stands up. Seeing this, one of the soldiers charges at him telling him to stay down and die. On the other hand, Haru tries to defend him as she kicks the soldier hard making him fall. Suddenly, something starts coming up from a spot as they keep shooting at it vehemently. They discover that it's a human form weapon. The large figure charges forward as an armored car shoots at it, forcing the spot to close up almost immediately. However, the human form weapon remains, as it destroys things vehemently forcing the soldiers to seek for reinforcement. At that moment, Haru tries to leave but Akiyuki grabs her hand, with the intention of protecting her. She eventually leaves him, runs away as if he is attacked by the human form weapon. It destroys buildings, houses, and even kills people. To protect the city, Akiyuki takes the human form weapon into a river, while he saves Haru from falling off a dangerous placement. He holds onto her tightly as he gets rid of the human form weapon. Shortly after, a strange girl whose name is Nakiyami changes him back to his normal self. She tells him that he has to come with her, and that if he fails to, he is sure to turn into a stone. When they get to her apartment, Nakiyami takes care of Akiyuki, as she confirms that he is alive. On the other hand, his parents are very worried about his sudden disappearance. At the headquarters, the soldiers discuss the case of Nazuna, the girl who caused the explosion. They are able to discover that she's a follower of Rikonism. It is also stated that six explosions involving white-haired children and two life forms known as Zammed had happened as the human form weapon landed. They come to the conclusion that the menaces cannot be dealt with without the support of the army. Therefore, Kakisu is put in charge of Sentan Island, the hub of the attacks. Meanwhile, still in her apartment, Nakiyami gives Akiyuki tea to make him better. He, however, thanks her and insists that he is alright. She tells him to be careful as the exsanguination needle is the only thing that's keeping him alive since it inhibits his zammed awareness. While they are still talking, someone knocks and informs Nakiyami that the captain wants to see her, and she leaves immediately. Later on, Akiyuki is adopted to join the postal crew. He's not so happy with this. He meets a crew member to take him back to the island, but he is ignored. Shortly after, he is kidnapped by another human form that comes to Zanbani to capture him. This puts Nakiyami on the quest to save Akiyuki from being killed or destroyed by the human form. Again, he thanks Nakiyami for saving his life the second time. Meanwhile, Haru goes to see Fusa Takahara and relays the message that Akiyuki is alive. She promises to find him as fast as possible. In Zabani, Akiyuki gradually adjusts to the way things are done. Nakiyami wakes up as he screams for Haru to run in his sleep. When he wakes up, she tells him that they are going to a woman called Madame Tension for his zammed training, further revealing that Madame Tension is a spiritual guide that must not be offended. 
He tells her that he's not so good with scary stuff. They come across something that causes them to cough. She tells him that it's a spirit calling incense and it's used in rituals. She then calls out to Madame Tension saying she has brought the Zammed. Seeing him, Madame Tension instructs him to stand before her, and after a brief examination, she tells him to sit. Just before he could say a word, she interrupts as she tells him that his fate has become intertwined with Zammed. Further revealing that the Hiroku residing in his right arm prevents him from ever living as a human. Irrespective of this, he still wishes to live. He asks if there is no way to take the Hiroku away from him. In response, she says the only person that can do it is Sanova. After the visit to Madame Tension, he's questioned as regards to what Zammed is in search of. Immediately after the meeting with the madam, his training commences. The training is done with his teammates in order to help him increase his skills control his powers, and groom him to be able to handle fights. Meanwhile, Nakayami sights another airship which is not so far off. She is, however, carried away with the crew members as Ishu instructs her to never have anything to do with them. On the other hand, Sagara breaks down for her loved ones that are dead as Haru and Furichi watch her closely. She's totally down and depressed. Back at Zambani, Akiyaki visits Madame Tension for the second time. He tells her that Zamd wants to dwell with other people in serenity and well-being. At the same time, Prios Soraki calls upon Ryozo Takahara to help her in researching an anti-human form substance. This is to be done in a research laboratory. The head of the army says they will change the name of the headquarters. One of the soldiers asks for the reason and he says it's hard to encourage self-reliance under the name Free Zone. He says it will now be called the Far East Autonomy. It starts raining thereafter and the head commander complains about the Sentan Island weather. The weather causes them to return to the ship. Back to where Akiyuki is, he is saddled with secretarial duty as it's part of his Zammed training. He is told to write letters that are addressed to the northern government. He wonders if they are not their enemies, but other enemies are pointed out for him to see. They happen to be refugees from the north and their parents stuff them in boxes using the south Lake kennel. Akiyuki is surprised that they are treated like male. He's told not to be fooled as they are enemies and are wired to kill. Meanwhile, Nakiyami talks to her people from the refugee sector. Her teammates are on a quest to find out which she would choose between staying on the ship and leaving the ship to join them. Nakiyami seems too long for them but is unable to leave her teammates. On the other hand, Reiko Kanba engages Tajiro Kagisu, as he projects a Hiroku experiment performed on Sagara. He shows him all this in the laboratory. Kagisu, however, is irritated as he leaves in anger. Shortly after, Akiyuki is told about Nakayami's attitude when she was first brought on board the spaceship. Ishu tells him that she used to cry every time in fear and will most likely love to be dropped. In response, Zagan tells Ishu that Nakayami is destined to go back to her hometown one day. Later on, Sagara is found in town by Haru and Furuichi. They had searched the nooks and crannies of the town for her, but all their efforts proved unyielding. Not until that moment. She is, however, not prepared to see them as she transforms into human form unexpectedly and makes to run away. Kagisu finds her himself and kills her in her human form. A boy is being trained as he is told that ASP suits are like bodies without souls. He must learn how to block off all irrelevant mental impulses. He is told to think in his mind and then move his arm. He fails and then is advised to take note of his state of mind as it is important since the mind controls the body. He is determined to try it again and is told to also move the leg, which he does effortlessly. Meanwhile, Haru is told to put on the test uniform by a commander while she is lost in thought. She does this. After a while, the captain instructs Nakayami to go with Akiyuki to check out a suitable spot for them, but she deliberately leaves him behind. Then, Akushiba throws him down to avoid the wrath of the captain. He screams as he falls from the sky, but Akushiba tells him to have fun and enjoy his time alone with her. While falling, he is able to grab her sky ship as he comes on board. She's angry, but tells him to use his seatbelt. When he says there is none, she tells him to hold on to her. Apparently, Akiyuki goes with Nakiyami to save a human form that had partially turned into a stone. They are on the quest to separate the Hiruko from the human form, but she finds herself caught up in it in the process. She seeks Akiyuki's help to get her out of it with his powers. On the other hand, Haru and Furuichi make up their mind to be part of the East Autonomy military. 
While under training, Akiyuki finally reaches out to Haru with a letter. Ryuzo tells Fusa that he used to be a military doctor working for the government in the northern part. Suddenly, Azam escapes the research laboratory just as Haru and Furuichi begin their training. The workers line up to get paid by the captain. They all seem to appreciate their pay as they enter and leave happily. Akiyuki gets paid too and he tells Akushiba he is grateful to have been paid. Even with all the trouble he has been to Nakiyami and to everyone. Shortly after, Akushiba asks him to hand over his money, promising to quintuple it when they return to Sentan Island. Akushiba then throws a large bag of paperwork at him to work on after he was quiet about the money. Meanwhile, in another place where Haru is, large mechanical figures with soldiers in them are led out and instructed to follow the lead of a Zam to a particular area. The 5th and 7th units of the area are to be paroled. When they get there, Haru recognizes the test type Zam. He says he wants to live and Haru recognizes it to be a voice like Akiyuki's. A man who is seated opposite it refers to it as a poor weak thing. He says that it seems the lines were too weak to hold a Hiroku. The commander then tells him that beasts choose their master as they will not be controlled by him. He is told to forget about retrieving it and prioritize civilian lives. He tells the commander to do as he pleases. They receive permission to fire as they charge towards the target place with the Zammed. Haru notices that it is pregnant before it had set out. She sends many letters to Akiyuki whom she misses and cares about. In the letter, she tells him that she will be waiting for him at Sumabara Pass, which is located in the sky. Shortly after, Nakiyami releases him to go with the deal of going with a pet Nakamoto. The hidden purpose of this is to follow him up and track him since the pet poses a tracking device on his collar. Haru and Faruichi are ordered by Kagisu to go to Sumabara Pass, in a bid to locating the squadron that had gone missing previously. They are to go, accompanied by their squad. Kiyo and Zuizo, however, save Akiyuki after he gets into a fight with a man who had turned into a human form earlier. Ever since the air raid in the previous month, more humans have been transforming into human forms. Now worried about Akiyuki, Nakiyama goes towards the mountains, leaving the airship and in search of him. Nakiyami is on a spaceship as she realizes she cannot go further because of the red sky cloud interference waves. She alights to the ground and is seen in a forest. In the forest, there's a large rock that she moves closer to. She sees a flower-like plant and looks opposite her to notice a strange object as she moves close to it. Shortly after, she goes into a building and sees some leftover food. But she ignores it on seeing two packed bags. Opening one of the bags, she notices it is a flight cap that seems like it's Akiyuki's. Eventually, she comes out of the building to see a mountain called Sumbara Pass, as she seeks to go and find out things herself. Unknown to her, Akiyuki is also near the mountain with a little girl and an old man. The little girl tells him that what they are witnessing is the biggest red sky stone mine in the world. She also says her father used to work there. The old man adds that the harbor town was very active, but it had changed upon the arrival of human form. Shortly after, Akiyuki sights Sentan Island ship. The old man tells him not to get his hopes high as he will be betrayed, and then leaves with the young girl. Ignoring them, Akiyuki heads toward the Sumbara Pass. Meanwhile, Haru and Furuichi see one of the cloths from the Lost Squadron in a tunnel. However, its mainsail pilot had transformed into human form. Akiyuki sees Haru from a distance after she is out of the tunnel. Their meeting and emotional reunion is interrupted as he changes towards the human form with his right hand. Faruichi is angry and stands up to him and deducing that he is a Zammed already. During the course of this, an anonymous Zammed shows up as Akiyuki escapes from Furuichi's approach. Akiyuki is fatigued as he is found by Nakiyama in a peculiar place. He tells her to reach out to Kiyo and Zuzo for assistance. Meanwhile, Furuichi tells Kagisu that Akiyaki is a Zammed, but he is brought back safely to the spaceship by Nakiyama as they forge ahead. Akiyuki is lying down when Akushiba tells him that they do not have space for him to be, if he becomes a statue. However, Nakiyama says to let him sleep. In response, he says she should not worry since the Hiruko is calming down. She tells him to change the bandage and pour some water on it. Suddenly, a man races roughly with a motorcycle whose brake wire had been cut into their ship. The kids are overwhelmed with joy as they identify him as Rego. On the other hand, a ship races over the sea and takes off into the air on the captain's order. Haru goes to rinse her face as she thinks of Akiyuki. 
Meanwhile, a green soul stone is gotten and will be utilized for the coming Hiroko's experiment research in the lab. Akiyuki is angry because he feels rather controlled by Reigyo, who does not do that to the other crew members. Haru tries to influence Kagisu's thoughts that Akiyuki is still a human being. She points out the fact that he just has the zammed portion in him as human. Nakayami is told her village's goal, which is to retrieve the Holy Land from the government in the north. Five years before, the Diamond Tower is adored as a young man takes pictures of it. The group of the people asks Lord Hiruken to watch over them, always with his benevolent gaze. A young white-haired boy comes forward as the man tries to take a picture of him, but he could not as he brings out an object and slams it. Five years before, it is said that it has been on the ship two months when it happened. An explosion in some shitty little town in the Northern Territory. Right just like Santan Island, they spread their Heruko seeds there, and a Zammed was born. Cold rain was pouring in sheets that day, piercing through the man who'd just become Zammed like a knife. Eventually, he gives up and begins to turn into a stone. He forgets everything, name, past, and how to live. He resigns himself to death as if he's falling into a pleasant sleep. Nakayami wanted to save the monster but was unable to stop the transforming into stone. It began to swallow her up too. Am reaches them with Nakayami having a sort of blank smile on her face. She is saved as Ishu slaps her repeatedly. She is told to apologize. Akushiba then reveals the monster that was saved with Nakayami that day as Regyo Tsunamata. He then concludes his story to Akiyuki. Regyo says the crew shall take a photograph together by evening. During a training period, Furuichi depicts hard work and consistency. Haru seems extremely worried. Nakayami comes out hurt as she feels she has been a burden to Ishu. This happens before the picture is taken. Haru is told to forget about the past and to be attentive to her military career and purpose. The message is relayed to her by Kagisu. Akiyuki is shocked when he sees the picture that was taken. He is bewildered to see the Hiroku power in his hand shining very bright in the picture. Haru's mother died in a car accident a few years ago. Akiyuki had shown fort for her and was there for her to ease her pain. Raigyo tests Akiyuki as a human form vehemently heads towards their abode. The test is to deduce if he has any skills at all, and if his training had paid off in a good way. Nakayami rushes towards the exit as she runs into the captain who asks where she's going. She says she sorts to know what is going on outside. She tells Nakayami that it's just one human form and she should wait in her room. She protests as the captain shoots back saying she has told her times without number to stop making her job harder. Akiyuki is told to use the talent Hiroku gave him. He is told to bury it or bring it to life. He decides to make use of it. He strips himself of the bandage as his hand gets enlarged. He sees Nakayami who is on a spaceship above him. She shoots at the human form and says she won't kill it, but restore it to its original form. She goes after it against the captain's instruction. She instructs Yunbo to get Raigyo up. Akushiba says he is already up on the upper deck. He's holding flying lessons for the newbie. The captain says no one listens to her anymore. She says to do what they want. Akiyuki charges towards the human form clinging to him. Nakayami tells him to embed the seed with her in his body. He does it successfully as it disassembled. Nakayami grabs him on board as rain starts falling. She tells him that if she had a purer Ututu seed, she would restore the human form completely. Am um goes to the top deck to set fire and cannon to destroy the human forms, leaving Akushiba in charge of the ship. Regyo and Akiyuki destroy human forms on the deck, but it gets worse as they increase on the ship. Kiselji tries to maintain stability of the ship. A human form shoots Am um as he sorts to help Ishu. Akushiba is instructed to protect Ishu while Yunbo takes over the piloting. Ishu kills a human form that was turning a stone. Nakayami is unhappy that she could not save the situation. Nakayami stares at a picture for a while and drops it. Human forms form from the stones they had become and come to round her body. She raises her head and sorts to know where it comes from and whose soul it is. She asks to know its name as it blocks her mouth swallowing her. A cat appears and scares the human form away who drops her immediately. They go to meet her and inquire if something is wrong. She says she's just hungry. The airship alights so those inside can recuperate. However, Ryuzo tells Kagisu about the project at hand to find out an antidote to cure human form. 
Nakayami sorts to go back to her hometown because of what had taken place with her earlier. Akiyuki decides to go with her also. Nakayami is approached by Ishu who tells her she has never been seen as a burden. They all escort Nakayami and Akiyuki as they both leave. Haru, however, visits Furuichi. She deduces that he already turned into Zammed also. She is filled with compassion. All the teammates are asleep except a particular lady. She makes sure everyone is in a good position and covers the little ones against cold. Raigo is awake as he takes pictures outside since he could not sleep. It is hard for him to find sleep whenever he is quiet. It was sunset as she asks if she could preserve times like that with this spirit camera. The captain is awake as she goes in to offer the captain drink and they talk shortly. Akiyuki reaches out to Haru's sister as soon as he gets to Sentan Island with Nakayami. Her name is Midori. The purpose for this is for Haru to be notified about his return. Unconsciously, he makes Kagisu and Sukaki know about his arrival. Akiyuki goes to see Ryuzo at the clinic where his Haruko power is made known. He's shocked to see that Nazuna, the girl whom he had thought to be dead, has been in the clinic with his father. His mother, who knows about his arrival, is unable to meet up with seeing him after he left the house. However, Haru gets to meet with Nakayami at Keiko Plaza. They finally get to see each other at the place. Unfortunately, their reunion is halted as Furuichi comes in to interrupt them, with the intention of testing out his newly gotten power. He's excited about it and wants to quickly test it out. In the course of doing this, he grabs Haru's arm. What impact do you think his power would have on Haru? We'll bring you that and more in due time. For now, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more breathtaking anime recaps like this. Until next time, take care and stay safe.